This is Baxter, everybody. Baxter. Oh yeah. Oh, there you go. Hi, buddy. <laughs> Morning. And we have we have to. <laughs> anytime there's a puppy around, we always forget about the owner. <laughs> this is Jen, everybody. Uh, so thanks for bringing Baxter along, uh, Jen. And we have Michelle from Barkbusters. Hello, Hello. J uh, Michelle. Hello. As we get uh, everybody's name right. Um, so we're kind of. We're doing, this is pretty cool because we have cute puppies, so that's always good TV. But puppies, there's <laughs> been a real demand and a real push for puppies through the past year with the pandemic. Do you find that? Absolutely, it is puppy mania right now. We are getting so many calls about, you know, I've got a new puppy, it's our first one, a lot of first time puppy owners. So we're getting a lot of questions. And one of the main ones being, you know, how do I stop my puppy from nipping? Okay. Uh, and so with Is Baxter, he he, right yeah, you yeah. can see right there, you know, as soon as you get your hand near a puppy, they're gonna start to want to use their mouth. So it's important to understand, you know, puppies use their mouths to explore the world. And so one of the first things we start to teach is how do we properly engage with a dog? And you can tell, so I'm keeping my hands relatively still here. But if I start to, you know, do one of the ears, you can see like it's gonna, it's, it starts to typically get them well, he's pretty well trained so far. <laughs> it starts to typically get them riled really up. Excited. So really one, one of the things, and I'm sure Baxter's been start to be taught this, is calm hands. We always want to start petting a puppy with nice, calm hands and avoid lots of this because this feels like biting puppy teeth, right? And What's so, he doing when he's doing that? Is he looking for food or just trying to... They assess the world with their mouths, right? And certainly once they start to get older than this, they, they start teething. So they're, when they're chewing on things, including us sometimes, right. they're trying to work those puppy teeth out because their new ones are growing in. And just, you know, and I don't know if you've ever had any dental work done, but that can be really painful and itchy and that kind of stuff. For you guys, how are you training these days? Are you still able to... Because Barkbush is all about not in big groups like That's you, you, right. you do want it like that because like we so we have another a pooch over there and actually Baxter's obviously interested in that the other dog <laughs> yeah, of course. but when you have a bunch of dogs together they get really preoccupied they get very distracted by each other so we find with in-home training for a lot of dogs one-on-one -on -one, uh, it lowers the distraction so they can really focus on what they need to do and if we're training them in and around their own homes we're also dealing with the problem on the spot you know okay. if they're jumping on guests coming into your home or you know counter surfing in your kitchen so we really want to deal with that kind of stuff oh, oh TV stuff buddy. Is tough. are you loving him though jen yeah he's awesome yeah i bet because how old is he he's 12 weeks 12 old. weeks well good stuff baxter so we're going to be hanging out with michelle and we're going to have a few different types of dogs right that's baxter's right. really young let's maybe get an older puppy and like maybe some older dogs and work through some of the uh, the issues or problems if you have uh, have a dog and uh, you're looking for some help uh, bark busters would be the place to go in hamilton and burlington <laughs> come back on morning live okay baxter the money shot we need the money shot Oh, yeah. Hey. Hey. All right, we went from 12 week old Baxter. We're into the teenage years now. We are into the teenage years, <laughs> back absolutely. With, back with Michelle from Barkbusters. And who do we have here, Michelle? We have Betty, and Hi, Betty, Betty is an eight month old uh, uh, Swiss mountain dog. And as you can oh. see, she's ready to rock and roll. Right, she doesn't like Hi. Luke. I can see why. <laughs> well, we also have Ryan the intern over there off cam camera too. Okay, so you have, I have some treats in my right. hand. So we're gonna go through how we appropriately greet a dog here. Now, some of you guys have already already met her, Given her a but bit. we want to go through what you do and don't do with the dog. And one of the main things I find people want to do is they want to reach down and they want to pet the dog immediately. Okay. So when you're, when you're greeting a dog, you don't want to stick your hand in their face immediately. Because it's a hand they don't know. Well, it's a hand right? they don't know, exactly. She doesn't know what I'm going to do or what I'm not going to do or if I'm going to pet her or if I'm going to hit her right. or anything. Of course, none of us would be doing that. Yeah. But you want to show her you come bearing gifts. So you want to stand just with your hands together and you're just going to let her Hi. check you out. Hi. And you're just going to drop those. I drop them. Yeah, right you're to not going to drop it to the ground, right? Okay. Buddy, it's right here. There you go. Oh, there, there we go. There we go. And this is particularly helpful when you've got a dog that's not too sure about you or what you're going to do. You want her to be, to, to be able to come and go on her terms Ryan, there. Ryan, Oh, drop to the ground. Oh, good. Go. <laughs> good girl. Good girl. Right, so where are we at with eight months? So are they starting to get locked into the way they want to do things? Not at all, but they're really hitting a teenage phase here. So the last dog we saw was Sleepy Little Puppy, and she's really starting to go, 
well, okay, maybe you can't tell me what to do. Maybe I can start to explore now and, you know, really, really feel myself. Good girl. Is and they will all go through this phase. So is there a point where you, the, the old saying, you can't teach a dog new tricks? No, you know what? Tricks? I, the oldest client I've had, the oldest dog client, I should say, was about 14 years old. Right. And so we you can, can still, still, you can still teach them. The okay. only thing is the longer they've had to form, you know, old habits, right the longer it's gonna to take to undo that. And you're also training the owners. You're also training the owners, <laughs> okay. absolutely. Okay, we'll take another break. We have uh, we have a couple Good more girl. friends for you guys to meet. Yeah, say hello to everybody, <laughs> Betty. Thanks for helping us out. Betty, I do have a couple more treats. Betty. If you do want some help with your pooches, uh, Michelle and the gang of Barkbusters, Hamilton Burlington could be an option. Oh, Betty, look what there I got. Go. Good girl. Look at oh, yeah, there we go. There's a good oh, girl. Yeah. Hi, Betty, right here. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be sure about Luke either. Morning, everybody. Welcome back. We're hanging out with Barkbusters this morning. We have another special little friend. This is Coco. This is Linda's dog, who is also with uh, Barkbusters in Hamilton and Burlington. Uh, but we have Michelle with us here, and we've got the the puppies out of the way. This is on to the the <laughs> adult dogs. This, we... this is where this is where we can challenge their brains a little more to pay attention, right? So, so as you can see, Linda is is working Coco on some drills, right? Teaching her to stay beside her. So she's going real slowly here. And in fact, if we were starting this with a brand new dog, we wouldn't be, you know, coming to the park where there's all sorts of distractions. It, it would actually be important to do this in the driveway, in front of the house. You really want to slow it down and focus on what you're doing, what you're asking your dog to do. And you can see that's the kind of focus we're looking at. You see when Coco looks up at her human here, that tells me she sees Linda as more important than anything else that's going on around her. And you know, there's there's dogs there's just, other dogs, other, yeah, there's elsewhere. dogs and there's people and there's lots of sounds and sights here. And Coco has learned, you know, as she's going along to pay attention to her human here. And that's a really nice thing. How much <laughs> you train the owners compared to the dogs? Oh, uh, we, you know, we've got a joke, like the, the, the dogs are the easy part. Really? <laughs> it's, it's really all about, uh, you know, training the humans to keep up the, the habits, you know, because we can show them what to do as trainers, but it's up to you to carry it out every day. Because then if you're not doing it, as, then the dog won't be listening as much either, right? right? Once they get those training downs and if you start loosening them, those rules, then They're, everything will be. You got it. They're just following our lead, whatever we're doing. Okay. Quite literally. <laughs> what about, uh, Linda, what about off-leash? So when do you suggest off-leash? Obviously... When you're very solid on your on-leash <laughs> work. <laughs> I know, that having a camera stuck in your face is tough, Coco. I understand that. <laughs> but it, mostly Coco's at the point where we would start doing that. So Linda can typically drop the leash and Coco's going to follow her when asked, right? So you can see that. Even if it's something like getting spooked by something, a loud getting sound. Spooked. And these things happen, right? They happen with all dogs. Dogs go, oh my goodness, something's there. And you, you have to be ready for that kind of stuff. And so you can see Linda doesn't get rattled. She just refocuses the dog. Because if you stay calm, they're going to stay calm. Okay. Uh, always looking for new clients? Always. Always, lo always looking to meet new friends? Of course. Yeah, okay. Uh, Hamilton, Burlington? Uh, well, all over Ontario and okay. certainly all over Canada and we are worldwide as well. Awesome. We have <laughs> one more dog to meet. Coco. Coco, good job. Hi, sweetie. Good work. Hi. Hi, Lynn. Hi. Hi. Yeah. Our final friend. Oh, hello. Hi. Yeah, it's your turn. <laughs> Theo, it's your turn. I know you're excited. Great to be back with Barkbusters here in Hamilton. We also have Kathleen, who's our wrangling Theo. Is Theo yours? Yes, he Theo's, is. yeah. And three? He's three, three, years three. Old. yeah, okay. Uh, back with Michelle and that, oh, the whole gang's here. Hi, everybody. Um, but we've kind of had different sizes of dogs. And yeah. that's what you kind of want to really talk on, like the, the dog for you. Yeah, so, and it really is about what is the right dog for for you because for here we've got you know sort of a range of athletes to you know Theo is more of a snuggle bug he's a bit more of a you know a couch potato and you you want to make sure that you got to look at your life and say what's right for me am I training for the Ironman then yeah I'm going to want a dog that's that's uh, going to be able to keep up with me. Am I more of a put my feet up and watch Netflix kind of dog that, or kind of person that I'm going to want a dog that's going to want to settle with me a bit? 
Uh, and I, I'm always telling people, don't, don't tell yourself you're going to uh, become an athlete, become a triathlete just because you've got an active dog. It might happen, but it's not likely to. <laughs> you the know best what I mean? way? So is that through research? Is that knowing other people with those type of dogs? Yeah, there's lots of stuff you can do. You can talk to people who have those breeds of dogs. Uh, certainly the internet is a wealth of information mm. and, you know, honestly, some misinformation. So, you know, do a lot of reading. You can also talk to us at any point. We've always, you know, I've always uh, talked people through What's your life? What's the right dog for you? What are you, what are you looking for out of a dog? Uh, so we're happy to uh, you know, answer any questions that way anytime. Because when it comes to training, what's, in, what's involved? How long does it take? How long does it last for? Depends on the dog. Obviously, yeah. if we're starting with a dog like Baxter, it's going to be a bit, bit more of a, a, a process. Uh, if you're starting with a, an older dog who has, you know, any level of training, like a rescue, then, you know, it can be a bit of a shorter process. There's no one answer to that. And, you know, committing to working with your dog is always a, a lifetime commitment. Right. Um, is there meow busters? Because uh, co-host uh, Annette is, uh, is on Team Cat. Do I you wish. Deal with <laughs> if, if I could, I could keep my cat off the table, you know? <laughs> they're, they're a bit, they were a bit tougher. Exactly. Um, okay, well, thanks, everybody. Thanks, Linda. Thanks, Jen. Thanks, uh, Kathleen. And thanks, Michelle. And to Thank all you. our pooches out there, Bark Busters is uh, right throughout the region. So, uh, so reach out if you need some help with your pooches at home. Oh, it's kind of tough, I know. Right, Baxter? Yeah, big round. Thank you.